Okay, so today we're going to talk about the Truth Ear Nova. This is the latest hyped IEM release. And the question is, does it live up to that hype? Is it as good as or better than the Hexa? And ultimately, is it worth your money? Is it worth buying? Should you care? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out. Okay, so with this one, the interesting things about it are not necessarily about its performance. You'll see what I mean here. Uh, but just as we get going here, a quick disclaimer, this unit was provided by Shenzhen Audio for review. Big thanks to Shenzhen Audio for sending it in. And of course, I've not been paid to say anything in particular about this product, and all thoughts and opinions here are my own. So what is the Truth Ear Nova? Well, this is a hybrid IEM, so it's got a dynamic driver in the base with four balanced armatures for the mids and for the highs, and it comes in at around $150. So it's at a fairly accessible price point, and I think that the price point here matters because what this is, essentially, is the Moondrop variations at home. Well, realistically, it's just the Moondrop variations at a much lower price tag. And there's also a release from Timmy at Giz Audio, the Chopin, or as I like to call it, the Chopin, uh, that goes for a similar sound signature as well. So at this point, I kind of think that these are the more budget statements of that sound signature. And I really would have a hard time recommending the higher priced variants over these new ones, certainly in the case of the Nova. So uh, let's take a look at the measurements here and I'll just show you that comparison right away. And I'll show you both the raw and compensated measurements. And you can see from the graph here done on the 5128 that the Nova is very similar to the variations. They go for a nearly identical sound signature. Now, that is, of course, a good thing in the sense that they're doing it at a lower price point, and I imagine all the folks who bought the variations at its MSRP are probably seeing this going, damn it, I wish that this was out when I bought the variations because they would have had to spend less money. And when looking at the graph here, you can see that, for the most part, it does fall within the range of the preference bounds that most people prefer. Uh, and if you're interested in what's going on with this, I've done a video on that to help make sense of it, but essentially, uh, this is Harman-like for its tuning. It has similar features to what you might find with other IEMs that are tuned to this target. And here I'm showing you the gross data with the Harman IE 2019 target as a reference. And just keep in mind that this is done on 711 and is not comparable to the BNK 5 and 28 data. And this is also where things get particularly interesting with this IEM. And you'll notice here, I'm using it with these flange tips. So what's that all about? So I'm now showing you the measurements of the Nova with different tips. And you can see that based on the change to the tips, you get a different response, uh, predominantly in the treble. So if you're like me and you like less energy in the lower treble, this is worth doing. The problem is that in my ear canal, that also compromises the bass quite a bit. So it's kind of like a trade-off that I'm not really sure I would choose. But it does indicate that, you know, based on the insertion depth of the IEM and the interaction with the ear canal, you can get a different response depending on your ear canal. So at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, well, here is essentially a $500 or $400 IEM that you can get at $150. Um, and in that respect, uh, that's that's pretty good. But it is not all, all is not well. So the thing about the variations. Okay, so I could see why people like this one. But I personally found it to be particularly glaring and fatiguing. The main reason for this is because the distance between the upper mids or lower treble and the lower mids, say at around 400 hertz, is extreme. It is substantial. And what this sounds like is a particularly lean and fatiguing and shouty kind of thin, glaring presentation to the mid-range. I'm just going to say it like it is. So with the variations, it's not one that I would use without EQ. And the same is true for the Nova. And so that's why ultimately I have to say that the Truth Ear Nova is an IEM that I simply do not find to sound better or more balanced than the Hexa. The Hexa is once again the most balanced IEM around this price point that I've heard. But at the same time, it has to be commended for being able to achieve a sound signature that is likely to be palatable for a wide range of people at this price point. Now, there is also something else to talk about here, and it's that IEMs are going to vary more substantially depending on the person. And I'm going to say something now that a lot of people are going to hate, and I also kind of hate it, but the truth has to be said that there is actually a better case for EQing in-ear headphones than over-ear headphones. And it is far more difficult to predict how something is going to sound on the graph when we're talking about in-ear headphones compared to over-ear headphones. And that's because the pinna is being bypassed. And so your head-related transfer function, the, the pinna aspect of the head-related transfer function, needs to be assumed. And that means that essentially there's going to be more variation for how IEMs are going to be received. I know that EQ is its own controversial subject, 
And with IEMs, I think there's probably a lot more resistance to this because IEMs are portable and that just adds another layer of inconvenience. But I really think that you're not getting the most out of your IEMs unless you're EQing them. And beyond that, it is also far easier to find IEMs that are going to sound wrong in the treble in some respect. So here's how we should think about the Truth Ear Nova. It is commendable that they're able to achieve this tuning at a much lower price point than what the Variations was at. It is no longer really worth going up to the Variations if you're into this kind of sound signature. And ultimately, that's where I land on it. Yes, I think if you're looking for that more V-shaped presentation, that Harman-esque kind of sound signature, then the Nova is another strong candidate in that uh, portfolio. But for those who are looking for a little bit more of a balanced sound signature that is a little bit more even keel throughout the mids especially, I think the Hexa is still going to do a better job of that, and it's ultimately the one that I prefer. I would love to see Truth Ear take a stab at that one at a higher price point. Well, it can be at any price point, really, but you get what I mean. We're basically at a point where we have enough of these types of tunings available on the market, and I'd love to see companies do something that is a little bit more congruent with the acoustic impedance of a human ear. For more information on that, I will leave an article linked in the description so you can have an understanding of kind of the IEM landscape and how things are changing based on new measurement tools and techniques. And of course, if you're interested in the measurements done of the Truth Your Nova here and also the comparisons with the variations, I'll leave that in the description as well. And if you find this interesting, you can join us on our Discord. That's where we hang out and debate all of this stuff. You can tell me that I'm wrong and we can all have a good time. But that is it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.